Should you stop buying homage watches? The short answer is no, if you still want to buy homage watches. Buy whatever makes you happy. There is no snobbery on this YouTube channel. But I made this video for someone who's maybe already owning a few homage watches in their collection, maybe is looking to uh, compare whether they should buy another homage or save up for something a little bit more expensive, something a little bit more unique. First, I want to be clear about what I mean when I say homage watches. Now, technically, Tudor Black Bay 58 is an homage to vintage Rolex Submariner. But this is not the type of homage I'm talking about here. The type of homage I'm talking about in this video is a straight up copy. Think of Invicta Pro Diver. Nothing wrong with this watch. In fact, it's a really good watch for the money. But it is undeniably a straight up copy of Rolex Submariner without Rolex on its dial or the clasp. So basically, when I say an homage, we're not only talking about a price category, which homage watches tend to be a little bit cheaper, under $400, let's say, but we're also talking about the type of watch that is a straight up copy of the original without the logo. So we're not talking about fakes. Fake watches are there to deceive other people into thinking that it's a Rolex or AP or whatever it is. These watches are not there to deceive anyone. They look like the original, but they have no logos anywhere on the dial. We're also not talking about watches like Tudor Black Bay 58, where they pay homage in certain design elements to the original, but they still have a lot of their own heritage, a lot of their own design elements. So I hope that's clear uh, what type of watches we're talking about in this video. I think the best way to talk about homage watches is to actually talk about my own experience with homage watches. Over the years, I actually owned quite a few. Of course, I have no problem with homage watches. In fact, I really like the idea of homage watches. If you don't have the means or if you don't want to spend the money on the real thing, it's nice to have an option of an homage. If you like a certain design, hey, an homage might be a really good option for you. I know that not everyone wants to spend thousands of dollars on Rolex Submariner, for example. I was in that position. I didn't have any money to spend on Rolex Submariner. So over the years, I actually owned quite a few different Rolex Submariner homages, some cheaper, some more expensive. I bought and owned watches from companies like Tissell. I owned their Submariner, a Phoebus Submariner, a Lorio Submariner, an Invicta Submariner, a Genoa Submariner, a Tavis Submariner, and so on and so on and so on. You get the point. But you know what happened over the years? I got rid of every single one of my Rolex Submariner homage watches. Now you might be saying, hey Oleg, it's easy for you to say now you actually own a Rolex Submariner. So yeah, of course you sold them because you have the original. But I sold all of my Rolex Submariner homages way before I got the real deal. Over the years, as I got deeper into watches and watch collecting as a hobby, I started appreciating a lot of little details about watches that I haven't appreciated before. To give you a concrete example, uh, let's take Breitling Navi Timer. I love this piece. I love the design of this watch. I love the history of this watch. And I also love what this watch represents in history of horology. As I started to appreciate what this watch means to the watch community and to watch collectors, I started appreciating this watch almost like from the outside. It wasn't something that I must own. It was something that I'm just glad that exists and I'm glad that this entity is sort of there to represent all this history and all this heritage that comes with the model. Now, I know it might sound a little hoity-toity and it probably does, but that's just how I started feeling about watches. So I didn't necessarily want to own a watch that looks like the Navi Timer uh, because I love the design. I started wanting to own a Navi Timer. And if I couldn't own the Navi Timer, that was fine too. I think as you start collecting watches for a long time, you no longer want to own every single model. You just kind of appreciate that they exist. And I appreciate that other people have the ability to own this model. So if I ever buy a Breitling Navi Timer, fantastic. I'd be very happy. But if I never do, that's also fine. I just appreciate that this model exists. Appreciating the design and watches for what they are was one piece of the puzzle that made me want to stop buying homage watches just because they look like a legendary watch. Now, of course, there is a time and place to buy something like that. Like, for example, if I wanted to buy a Navi timer, 
but I wasn't sure about the size of it or the looks of it and how it would fit in my collection. I could buy an homage to a Navi timer for a few weeks, wear it and kind of test it out in my collection, see how it fits on the wrist, see how I like it before I commit all that money to buying the real deal. So yeah, in this case, I might consider it, but not really, because that brings me to my next point and why I stopped buying homage watches altogether. I sort of got bored of them. I was buying them temporarily, and then after a few months or weeks in some cases, I would just get bored and stop wearing them. Maybe you had similar experience if you owned a few of these homage watches. Again, coming back to Rolex Submariner homages, for example. After a few, you kind of know what to expect. They sort of all blend in together. So when you see a new one pop up on AliExpress or you see a new micro brand pop up with homage of a Submariner, you sort of know what to expect. Even though they're all slightly different, they have varying quality and varying design elements and uh, choices for finishes and choices for materials used. For the most part, you sort of know what to expect and it's sort of boring after two or three of these watches. Owning a few of homage watches of the same design can also make you feel a little bored with that design. If you own five different Rolex Submariners, then Rolex Submariner as its design starts to appeal to you a little bit less. I don't know if you can relate to this point, but that's something that happened to me. That's why I actually never really owned an homage to a Rolex GMT Master II because that was my dream watch, that was my grail, and I didn't want an homage to sort of ruin that uh, iconic homage, that dream of mine. Uh, so that's why I never owned one. Maybe that was just me, but it's something that I noticed about my watch collecting. My advice would be if you already own an homage of, let's say, a Rolex Submariner, again, to come back to this watch, don't buy another homage of a Rolex Submariner just because it has better specs or it has better finishes or it uses a better movement, what have you because it's not gonna make you happier. You will wear it for a few more weeks and then you will put it in a drawer. If you already have a Rolex Submariner homage and you're bored of the Rolex Submariner homage, chances are your new Submariner homage will also get boring. And if this applies to you, if you are bored of your Submariner or whatever other homage, maybe it's time to step up and buy some original designs. Now, you don't necessarily have to buy the original of the watch you're homaging because sometimes it might be out of your means, sometimes you just don't wanna spend that much money, but you can of course get something like Hamilton or you can get something from Lodgings. There's so many different options. If you wanna go in mid-tier, you can go with Tudor or Oris. There are just so many other choices. And once you start learning a little bit more about watches, you start appreciating them, not only for the designs, but also what these watches represent and why certain watches are the way they are and how they shaped horology and how they shaped history. And you're starting to appreciate some of these even more affordable watches on a deeper level. Once you start learning about a certain model, let's say you're a big fan of AP Royal Oak, you always wanted an AP Royal Oak, something about the design or something about the history, and you have maybe an homage of that watch, or maybe you're considering buying an homage of that watch. And by homage, I'm not talking about watch that pays homage to the elements of AP Royal Oak, I'm talking about a straight up copy that just doesn't have AP on its dial. Well, maybe take a step back and consider why you like the AP Royal Oak. Is it the history? Is it that iconic design? Is it the integrated bracelet? Are there any other watches on the market that can fill that void? There are proper homages and not copies. And again, there's nothing wrong with these copies. It's just chances are you'll get bored of them. But if you get something like, let's say, a Tissot PRX, that watch is great in its own right and it is also paying some homage to AP Royal Oak. So that might be a better option for you. So my advice is take some time, step back, kind of weigh your options and see why you like certain watches and it might surprise you. Maybe you're already past buying copies and you wanna get something else. Or maybe you don't wanna get past buying copies and that's totally fine too. In this case, you can double down, you know what you like, you know what you don't like, you know why you like it and it will make the whole hobby much more enjoyable. 
Speaking of enjoyable, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching it all the way to the end. Give a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We release new videos every week. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about buying homage watches. Are you tired of it? Do you still buy a lot of homage watches? I want to hear from you guys. Check out the description. There is a secret link and there is a link to bondnatorstraps.com. Check those out if you're curious. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.